Global climate crisis, inevitable, unprecedented, and irreversible. This was the title that headlined the Guardian newspaper issue 2021. Inevitable, unprecedented, and irreversible. Well, what if I were to tell you that this headline is not exactly true? Now, I'm not saying that global climate crisis is not an issue, because it is. It is one of the, sorry, the biggest issue we face as a society today. Not only does it dictate our present, our futures, our children's futures, but practically any life on Earth. And that point, that point of no return, it's approaching fast. Roughly seven years from now, scientists say, if we don't reduce our global greenhouse emissions by at least half. Now, many of you may be sitting in front of me today, may be thinking, Pia, what are you on about? We're talking about radical change here. We're talking about change to the way we make our food, the way we produce our transport, the way we produce our energy, everything basically. And in the space of seven years, impossible. Well, what if I were to tell you that that headline is absolute rubbish, garbage, if you will. Now, to reassure you that I'm not going absolutely mad, let me explain where I'm coming from. Climate change is unprecedented. True, very true. Even though we could have predicted it in the past, we could have never predicted it to the extent it is an issue today. Inevitable, well, maybe, if we don't do anything about it. Irreversible, no, no it's not. And it doesn't require radical change either. See, the issue we face as a society today is that we believe the solution to sustainability lies within radical new technologies such as carbon capture and carbon storage that are neither attainable nor achievable. We believe we don't have a model for sustainability that doesn't harm our GDP or our global quality of life, yet is sustainable. Well, what if I were to tell you there is a solution, a sustainable solution, found in a country known as Uruguay. This country, tucked away between Brazil and Argentina, is not very well known about. Well, I'm not saying that you in front of me aren't absolute geography geniuses, but take me for example. Me, as a native Uruguayan, only found out when I was eight that Uruguay is not in fact a city in Argentina, but its own country. <laughs> this student is now studying geography to this date. This country, seeming irrelevant and obscure, is actually one of the most sustainable places on Earth. Not only is it one of the only countries set to stay below maximum emission levels set in the 2019 Paris Agreement, but 98% of, of its total energy comes from renewables. Yet, they have one of the lowest poverty rates in the whole of South America. Healthcare is a nationwide right, and they have a majority middle-class population. Well, how are they doing it? Let me give you some background. In 1726, the country was taken up by the Spanish and became part of the Villa Royal. However, however, in 1811, the country rebelled, and in 1828, finally gained independence. In 1980s, however, there was an energy crisis. There was an energy crisis was brewing, and this was mainly due to the country being too small. As the country has one of the smallest land masses in the whole of South America, it doesn't have its own natural gas supply and very limited oil supply, therefore relied heavily on countries such as Argentina and Brazil for its energy. As energy was becoming extremely, extremely scarce, energy became increasingly expensive, and a majority of the population could not afford their basic energy needs. Well, this is where a man called Ramon Mendes came into play. He wanted to find a way how to make Uruguay sustainable, not only for the present, but also for the future, so there's no more energy crisis coming to bear. So what he did was, in 2008, he proposed a sustainable energy plan, where he used old oil fields and put solar panels and wind farms on them. This project was initially refused funding from the World Bank as they thought it was too ambitious and impossible to do. Yet, he broke all the rules and defied all odds by finishing earlier than he expected so that in 2016, half a billion dollars was saved from the economy and the country had become 98% powered from renewables. Energy crisis, no longer an issue. 
they had sufficient energy, and they had to save money in the process. In addition, because of the previous energy crisis, a majority of the population still had their sustainable, um, their sustainable methods in place, and therefore saved energy and therefore making the issue even more sustainable. I acknowledge that this country is small and has an extremely low population, but change was done fast and successfully, may I add. Can't they be an encouragement to other more developed, much richer countries out there to do the same? And maybe with the save money that they produce with these new methods, give it to lower income countries that maybe could not afford this change so that we all work as a team and we all become sustainable and energy sufficient. Teamwork, just an idea. Now, one of the country's largest industries is cattle ranching, which is the same for many other countries such as Brazil, India, and China. This country has roughly 12 million cattle, which is three times their population, yet it does not affect their global greenhouse emissions. As we all know, cattle ranching is one of the worst things for the environment as it produces masses and masses of methane, which is more than 20 times worse than carbon dioxide and therefore detrimental to countries' sustainable footprints. Yet, Uruguay has not been affected. Due to natural pastures and forest conservation, in 2021, the country became the first nation in South America to export carbon-neutral beef. Sustainable, not only for the economy, but also for the environment. Issues to fuel have also been addressed. In 2022, the country gave its presented its roadman for green hydrogen, or H2U, project, which was predicted to produce 1.2 billion for the economy and 34,000 jobs. Not only social sustainability, economic sustainability, but also, in turn, environmental sustainability. Looking at this country, I have realized that the key to being sustainable lies within looking at change, not as a setback, but as an opportunity, a profitable opportunity. We must take into account economic and social factors, as only with these factors being stabilized are we able to have the environmental one. Now, back to this headline, global climate crisis, inevitable, unprecedented, and irreversible. Unprecedented, well, maybe, but irreversible, no way. There is hope, and it is achievable, only if we follow in this country's footsteps. Inevitable? No. Again, let's follow in Uruguay's footsteps and maybe we'll find the solution. Let's step forward. Let's make a change. Let's follow Uruguay in their sustainable roadmap. The, the, the sustainable solution is out there. We just have to have the drive and the confidence to follow it. Thank you very much. <laughs>